Tony D and Little Joan with screenwriter's rant on three different movies that look, I don't know, kind of dark for the most part. Um, the first one is called Something You Said Last Night, which is billed as a comedy drama, but looks kind of grim for comedy. The second is also supposed to be a comedy, but it's definitely a dark comedy, Baby Reindeer. And the third is Zoli Dal Zaldana, in the absence of Eden. Smash like and subscribe. Thank you for smash liking and subscribing. Check out my books. Links in the description. Comedy Heart in South Jersey. It's the Pioneers books 1 through 13. Uh, sorry, 14. Keep forgetting. Available at Amazon.com. Don't forget, Kindle Unlimited is free. So this is billed as a comedy drama. Something you said last night. Now, the main character is a transgender uh, girl. But they don't tell you that in the trailer you just sort of I guess got to figure it out for yourself and then I guess they're billing it as a coming of age but it looks incredibly tense and depressing <laughs> there's like one scene of the characters laughing everybody praising the film and her I guess falling in love but it doesn't look very happy it looks kind of grim kind of sad she goes back I don't know, she goes on vacation with her family and there's a bunch of dramatic tension, I guess. So, first act, they you know, they all decide to go on vacation because, like, the kids are young enough that they still would go on a family vacation, uh, even though maybe they're in college? I don't know. And then, uh, uh, she falls in love, I think. But maybe it doesn't go well. There seems to be one scene where they hint that, I don't know, a bunch of a bunch of angry dudes come to the car as this couple is making out. But it doesn't really show you what the crux of this whole movie is. Um, so, oh, here's some credits. Written and directed by Louise D. Phillips. Yeah, I don't know. It, uh... I, it's not really resonating with me. Um, everybody seems bummed out and depressed. Um, like the parents are kind of not, but it just seems like the main protagonist is not having a good time. So, I don't know, is this based on a book? Let's read the write-up. A writer in her 20s accompanies her parents and younger sister on vacation. It's a bit of a Spartan synopsis. You're not going to mention the main character's trans? Why wouldn't you mention that? Seems like the crux of the movie. And if it's not, well, where's the comedy? <laughs> where's the comedy? Uh, I could see it built as a drama. I don't know. Uh, another movie that's got to be a dark comedy but again doesn't look very funny it's called baby reindeer it's about a comedian who gets a stalker and uh he eventually reports her to the police but of course she hasn't really just you know she's not saying anything direct and because he's a stand-up comic at first he kind of puts up with it but it gets weirder and weirder and starts to impact his relationships and he tries to reason with her, but it doesn't work, and she finds him online. It's made from the guys who made The End of the Effing World, which wasn't a bad show. At least the first season was good. Um, but again, it seems very dreary and dark, and not funny at all. Like, he's a comedian, but there's not one funny moment in the trailer I've seen. It's all very tense, and uh, why is he wearing this suit? When's the last time you saw a comedian wear a wacky suit? Is this something in England? Because this takes place, I think, in England or Scotland. Not your typical boiler, bunny boiler story. That doesn't seem funny either. Are you, are you making a reference to Fatal Attraction? How old is that movie? It's like 30 years old. You're making a joke, a reference to 30 years ago? Who wrote this thing? Uh, Baby Reindeer doesn't see doesn't seem like to again like you know comedy's got to resonate a little bit i've done stand-up comedy and i don't see one thing in here that resonates with me 
April 11th on Netflix. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say this. So first act, I guess she starts stalking him. He laughs it off. It gets weirder and weirder. Second act, it really starts to kick up. Maybe he confronts her. Maybe this is the moment. He confronts her kind of or meets her and she's clearly deranged. And now he's reporting her to the cops, but nobody takes it seriously. She keeps uh, following him around, ruining his life, ruining his relationship. It all culminates. There's a lot of foreshadowing here. Oh, I think one of us will live or die. And like one of them's going to die. I'm going to guess it's going to be him. I really think it might be him as the one who dies. Um, yeah, so pretty dark. Um, and finally, The Absence of Eden starring Zoe Zaldana. Now, Zoe, I don't know who she's playing here. She's like a, a stripper who then gets... I guess she gets shot, but maybe they cut to a backstory. Maybe that's later she gets shot. And maybe they're doing the thing where she gets shot in the beginning of the movie and then they flash back how it all happened. I don't know. And then it's all about immigration. All about how terrible the people who stop immigration are, <laughs> of course. And how wonderful immigrants are. They just want to come here for a better life. And like all the immigrants are female. They're all female. And of course they're all trafficked, which is terrible. Which does happen, but it's like, would it happen if the border was closed? I don't think it would. If we had some kind of border protection. So, I don't know. This this feels like a heavy-handed drama meant to say, oh, we should open the borders wide. Um, looks, again, very dark and depressing. No, no hint of comedy here. And Zoe Zaldana is a pretty good actress, but like... Not, like, super good on the drama department. There's a scene here, and there's, like, a thumbnail of it where she gets really intense, but, like, it's a weird-looking face. It's a weird freeze. So, yeah, it just, I don't know, it just seems like the wrong role for her. Like, I get she she's played some action roles. I wouldn't mind seeing her in another action role. Um... She's pretty fit. I wouldn't mind seeing her in a romantic comedy of some kind. Something lighter than this. This one's so dark. All three of these movies feel kind of dark. Uh, so, first act, I, I, I guess she's trying to get across the border with her friend. And then her friend is trafficked. And as she's being dragged away screaming, Zoe agrees to watch her daughter. Who's like, I don't know, 12 or 13 or something. So then she continues her journey, and then, meanwhile, the the woman who was trafficked ends up being sold to a man who's, I think, kind of is in the border patrol and, like, keeps her kind of as a wife, which seems totally insane. Like, you're telling me that happens? That the member of a border patrol or a cop, maybe he's a cop, would, would keep a woman, like, paid for her? It doesn't make any sense to me. Like, how would he get away with that? I mean, maybe it's happened. I don't know. But, I mean, I wouldn't say it's impossible. I would just say it's unsustainable. But then Zoe, at some point, loses the kid. And I, I, I guess she tries to go find the mother and the kid. And and then it all goes wrong. And it, she gets shot at the end? I, I don't know. It just looks dark as F. All right, let's read the write-up. In the absence of Eden takes place at the border between the United States and Mexico, a hellish landscape inhabited by coyotes, armed officers, desperate immigrants, and refugees. When what happened to the cartel? Why aren't they? I guess coyotes. When the when Esme Saldana, a young woman working as a private dancer in Mexico, is forced to commit a violent act of self-defense. Oh, I guess she turns the tables on him. That results in the death of a cartel member. Oh, there's the cartel. She flees her homeland for sanctuary in the United States. That's a pretty uh, rare occurrence, I gotta imagine, but okay. Guided by a ruthless coyote and a group of undocumented immigrants, she befriends a young mother and her daughter along the way. Before crossing the border, the mother is taken from the group. Esme promises to protect her daughter and help them reunite again in America, touching off an interlocking story about people struggling to survive 
on America's border with Mexico. Again, it seems also terrible and pointless with our current policy. Who would want to see this? It all seems like, yeah, that's, that's horrible that it's happening. I, I want it to stop. No one wants to stop it here, it seems, uh, at least in a certain political party. So, uh, wow, depressing as F. All right, so how do I rank these three movies? Wow. Uh, I guess I would put it number one, Baby Reindeer, only because it's made by the guys at the end of the effing world, and that was pretty good. So maybe this is just a bad trailer and it's actually kind of funny, but it doesn't feel very funny to me. Uh, feels a little too intense for a dark comedy. Then number two, I guess would be something you said last night only because it's not that dark, I guess. And, uh... I, I don't know. I don't really want to see this one either, but uh, it at least is about a family. And then at the bottom, I got to put this movie, The Absence of Eden. It just seems utterly depressing and uh, kind of without any, you know, hope. Uh, I don't like movies like that, so I would put that on the bottom. You know, at least the other two movies, kind, there's kind of some hope there some light this just seems like it's reveling in border horribleness which is completely avoidable i think unfortunately eh, i won't get into it here uh check me out on odyssey bit shoot and rumble where i say very uh well joan says very spicy things not me not me her stance on the border it's crazy it's crazy she wants to yeah Hey, you have to tune in to Odyssey, Bitchute, and Rumble. Anyhow, there's three movies for you. <laughs> Who the hell would pay for these? I, I, I just wouldn't go to them. I mean, net, the first one's on Netflix, but yeah, I don't know. Not, not for me. Anyhow, that's it for me, Tony D and Little Joan. Check us out on Odyssey, Bitchute, and Rumble for our more base takes. I will be at, what is it called? Oh, right, Nerd Force Fan Fest tomorrow. Saturday at 10 to 4 for my uh, uh, appearance there. I won't have book 14 yet, but it is available on Amazon. I, I've ordered some copies. I'm waiting for them to ship. But I do have books 1 through 13 now. Just got a nice uh, little reorder from Amazon. So I hope to see you there. We'll see you.